Good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, this week I posted an article from All Israel um, website entitled, Is America Facing a Jonah Moment or a Nahum Moment? And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to read a portion of that article because I think it's really thought-provoking and I think it brings a lot of spiritual application to what we're going through right now as a nation. So, is America facing a Jonah moment or a Nahum moment? In the Old Testament book of Jonah, the Hebrew prophet was sent by the Lord to the wicked city of Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire, in order to preach a message of imminent judgment. Set aside for a moment the fact that Jonah didn't want to obey the Lord and preach this message and thus fled on a ship headed in the other direction. The point I want to focus on right now is that when Jonah finally did obey the Lord and did start preaching in Nineveh, he didn't call the people to repentance. Rather, in Jonah 3 verse 4, we see that the Hebrew prophet declared, quote, 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown. So what are the lessons we need to learn from the Hebrew prophet Jonah? That said, even though Jonah never called the people to repent of their sins, never pleaded with them to turn in humility to the one true God of Israel, never urged them to beg the Lord to have mercy on their souls and on their city and grant them forgiveness, even though Jonah never did any of that, that is, in fact, exactly what the Ninevites did. In the book of Jonah 3, verses 5 through 9, we read this, Then the people of Nineveh believed in God, and they called a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest to the least of them. When the word reached the king of Nineveh, he arose from his throne, laid aside his robe from him, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat on the ashes. He issued a proclamation, and it said, In Nineveh, by the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let man, beast, herd, or flock taste a thing. Do not let them eat or drink water. But both man and beast must be covered with sackcloth, and let men call on God earnestly, that each may turn from his wicked way and from the violence which is in his hands. Who knows, God may turn and relent and withdraw his burning anger, so that we shall not perish. Sure enough, the Lord heard the earnest prayers of the people of Nineveh and the king of the wicked Assyrian Empire. And as the people repented, God relented. The text tells us that when God saw their deeds, that they turned from their wicked way, then God relented concerning the calamity which he had declared he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The promised judgment did not come. The people in their city were spared from God's wrath. What an extraordinary moment. The pagans heard the word of the Lord, and it burned in their hearts. They believed God's word pleaded for mercy, and the Lord gave them mercy, even though he had never indicated through Jonah that he would do so. But this was not the only time the word of the Lord came to the people of Nineveh. About a hundred years or so later, the next generation of Ninevites had once again abandoned the Lord and fell back into tremendous evil, violence, bloodshed, lies, sorcery, and other wickedness. In the Old Testament book of Nahum, we read that the Lord spoke to the people of Nineveh, this time through a different Hebrew prophet named Nahum. Yet this time the people of Nineveh did not repent. They did not listen to God's word. They did not plead for mercy. They did not turn from their wicked ways and start praying, fasting and begging God for his mercy. Thus mercy did not come. Instead the judgment of God came upon the people. In 612 BC, the city of Nineveh was utterly destroyed. Today, those of us who are Americans must confront this question. Is America at a Jonah moment or a Nahum moment? God bless.